Hi everyone, uh, I'm Sarah Lidus. Uh, I'm a research software engineer working at the Netherlands eSciences Center. The title of my presentation is Research Software and Beyond, ESMI to a community-driven and fair software for evaluation of air system models. In this presentation, uh, I will discuss why it is a good idea to have a community-driven and fair software in climate science. And uh, as an example, I will introduce air system model evaluation tool. And then I will explain how these tools makes it possible to reuse the code easily, and it ensures transparency and reproducibility of research output. Uh, also, as you can see in this slide, uh, these are uh, references that I use in my presentation. Let's begin with some user stories. This is Jane. She is a researcher in climate science. And as you can see in this figure, in climate, we have different variables like air temperature, precipitation, wind, cloud, and so on. She wants to analyze a time series of 50 years of air temperature in the past and in the future generated by 10 climate models. So she has to start developing a code and uh, her code should run several tasks like finding and downloading data, checking data for correctness and completeness, processing data, storing the results, and finally creating some plots that she can use for figures in her publication. Also, she wants to make the code fair, and she knows that the code is sustained as it is usable by others for their own research. However, it takes some uh, time and effort from her to uh, develop a code that runs the analysis in an efficient way, and she has a time limit in her research. And also applying fair principle is not straightforward since her code, uh, which is a research software, is made to run a time series analysis in climate science. So this is a specific experiment in a scientific domain. And therefore, guidelines on how to do uh, these steps should be tailored to our own um, research field or community. This is another story. This is uh, Ben. He is also a researcher in climate science. He wants to analyze air temperature and precipitation simulated by five other different models. Very similar to Jane's story. However, developing code is a challenging task for him because as a researcher, he does not have all the skill needed to write a well-described and well-structured code during his research. To address these challenges, a community-driven and fair software can help. Here is an example, ESMI2 or Air System Model Evaluation Tool, which is a community-driven software. Let's see what ESMI2 is. ESMI2 is a software that facilitates the analysis of air system model. It is built and maintained by an international community of scientists and software engineers. And it involves around uh, 17 projects, 60 institutions, and 200 developers. The community includes uh, uh, scientific and technical teams that reviews the codes and contributions. Let's see what ESMI2 can do for us and how um, it makes it possible to reuse the code easily and it ensures transparency and reproducibility of research output. Not only development and maintenance of the software, but also discussion and collaboration mostly takes place in public, and for example, in GitHub. If you follow this link, you see the main page of the software as shown in this figure. There you can find more information about the repositories, people, teams, and also reporting issues. Um, for example, announcing workshops and monthly meetings or in public. The software stores provenance and citation information in a user-friendly way. In this way, it ensures transparency of research output. It also supports several programming languages and operating system. Uh, it processes data, data input and output uh, in an efficient way regarding computational resources. In this figure shows the architecture of the software. 
Automated testing through unit test and review process safeguard the quality of code, data, and publications. So in this way, developing code covers other aspects of research output that are uh, data and publications. And regarding the automated testing and review process, they use the available tools on GitHub, like as shown in this figure, GitHub workflows or uh, pull request reviews. The software is a collection of scripts with extensive documentation. And here, this is a link to the documentation. Documentation covers all aspects of research. For example, how software works, how to obtain and process data, uh, how to cite the result or the output of the analysis, and even what are the best practices in developing the code. Moreover, there is an online tutorial that shows not only how to run an experiment, but also how to develop your own scripts. So remember our uh, user stories using ESMI2, others can understand chain analysis. Ben can reuse code instead of re-implementing it from scratch, and they spend less time on developing code. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, very nice story uh, I, and very nice uh, animations. Um, if anybody has any questions for Sarah, uh, of course, you're welcome to um, raise your hand, unmute yourself and ask them. If not, you can also just put them in the document. And we have some time for questions. And actually, if there isn't any if questions. I'm going to be very cheeky and ask one uh, because it's and not directly to Sarah, but a little bit to uh, both uh, Carol and Nicolas, because I think Carol made the point of clean interfaces for that software should have clean interfaces. And Nicolas also mentioned the point that tools should be reusable. And I think ESMVAL tool is a nice uh, example of such a clean interface that can be reuse. So I don't know if you have any comments. Uh, how can we, how, what can we learn from ESMVAL tool that we can, everybody else who's developing other tools can follow the same steps to make a tool that has such a nice interface that can be reused easily. Yeah, uh, thank you, Carlos. Uh, what I wanted to uh, uh, emphasize that uh, this is a community effort. And uh, so to make such an interface, um, we need to build up on each other uh, contribution. And I think uh, this is the most strong point of the ESMA2 community. Yeah. If I could follow up as well, that uh, it's, it's also the very clean interface is absolutely important, but it's also um, making sure that you have uh, things like a very clear usage of results, for example, that those can actually be licensed, you know, they're licensed appropriately, because you can't, you can have a technical interface, which is very clean, but then if I'm piping it to the next service, I'm not allowed to do that because I haven't, the, the data licensing isn't sorted out. Do you see what I mean, Carlos? Yeah. So it's, it's more than just, um, thinking about using that tool independently, it's using it combined with other tools as Sarah points out. And I think we have to, to expect, we have to design for combinations that we don't expect that we will be in charge of. Exactly, and I would like to add that um, ESMI doesn't cover only um, elements related to software, but also it cares about data and publication, especially in uh, this domain. This is very important that these are, are linked together. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and uh, the uh, FAIR digital object that a few people have noticed that I talked about is a step towards that. So there's a community of activity, uh, particularly in, in Europe around combining, how do you package things together so that you can put the data the, the software, the publication um, dependencies as a unit of, of uh, scholarship for a scholarly exchange. Yeah, excellent, excellent. 
really nice. Thank you very much, Sarah and Carol, for your presentations. 